don't say the same two bedrooms Separate two bedrooms apart. But uh, really, I was on the phone there talking to the crew, um, as always. And, uh, you know, I'm pacing up and down, trying to figure out how to set the program. Uh, Coach Stone will be there a little bit. Just want to let Coach know he, he didn't get that recruit. I was like, you know, I got scared. Kind of, kind of lost my word. But uh, this, this is really, you know, a great situation being down here. Uh, it, it's a beautiful place. Uh, I've never had the opportunity to come down here. And I took a picture and I, I sent it to my wife. And she says, you know, well, you need to bring me down there. And I said, we need to miss the ball game. So, uh, but, uh, she's, she's been great. Um, the, the community in Mississippi State have been unbelievably welcoming to me and my family. Uh, I don't know if I make those water show up. Uh, got some unknown powers, I guess. Uh, but uh, it's been really great. Um, I, I tell you one thing here is like I haven't had a chance to do much. This is uh, marked my 50th day on the job here, and our, our uh, SID uh, Greg Ellis wanted to do a story on it uh, on the 50th day, and I said, "Why the 50th day, Greg?" And he says, "Like this sounds good." Let's so, uh, <laughs> just roll with it. But I had a chance yesterday to take a job through campus. And it's the first time I've really had a chance to actually see the campus. And I'm jogging around and I'm, I'm taking in the sights, I'm looking at the buildings, and I'm like, hmm, this is a pretty nice campus. <laughs> it's the first time I've really had a chance to experience the campus, and it's been great. Um, just to talk about a little bit about our situation and where we're in. Big talk about we had five scholarship guys coming back. And I, I sat down with my staff and I talked to them about like what we need. And at that point in time, we had zero point guards, you know, in the program. And I said, guys, I said, I feel pretty confident about my coaching ability. And I think we're gonna have a problem if we can't dribble the ball across the court. I said, like, I'm not a genius or anything like that, so I think we got need to go out and find some point guards and find some guys that can handle the ball for us. And you know, I think my staff did an unbelievable job in a short amount of time. Is that why nobody was laughing at my jokes? <laughs> all right, all right, okay, we'll see here. I'll try, I'll try a couple more and see if it actually works, if I get a laugh or not. Then I know it's just me. Uh, but uh, I, I, re I felt it was really important in a short amount of time that we go out and get some guys that can help us win, you know, SEC basketball games. And I, I know one beat reporter, he was talking to me about, like, you know, what do you feel about this rebuilding project that you're in? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He says, like, you know, this rebuilding mode. I said, what's that? You know, I said, I was hired to win ball games. And I, I think it's unfair to the kids that's coming back in our program, you know, the kids that's coming into our program to talk about rebuilding. I think it's unfair to the fans to talk about rebuilding. I want to win ball games and I want to win them right away. Now, thank you. We, we brought four kids on campus for official visits, and we, we uh, got all four of those kids. And I don't know if it's because of our recruiting pitch that I found out we're going to be out in Maui this upcoming season. So uh, we'll, we'll figure that out down the line here. But uh, I think the kids that we brought in are quality kids. Uh, first and foremost, I think they're talented kids. And I told our staff there's two things that we're not going to sacrifice on in our recruiting. Uh, the first thing is toughness. You know, I think it's very important that you go out and you find guys that compete at a high level and will go out there and give you a chance to win because of their toughness. And the second thing is character. You know, I, I, I feel like a, a really good basketball player that's a bad person helps you about 32 times a, a year, and that's on game night. The other 330-some days you got to worry about them, and it's just not worth it. So um, I, I think that we're going to find guys that go out there and compete and, and that you'll be proud of. Um, putting together a staff, what was a difficult uh, thing for me. Uh, there's so many uh, good candidates out there. And I remember just wrestling around one night and uh, I woke up about 3.30 in the morning. I wrote down six names and I just started looking at those six names and writing down positives and negatives about each guy. And I, I got showered up and I went into the office. It was about 4.30 in the morning. And, and I called one of the candidates and it was about maybe five o'clock in the morning. And he answered the phone in the slump and he was like, Hey, 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 coach, you know it's like 5 a.m. in the morning? I said, yeah. I said, you want a job, don't you? <laughs> so, microphone.
is working. <laughs> but uh, just started calling guys and, and putting together a staff. And uh, I think we put together a staff that will really go out and do things well. Uh, I, I had a, a situation where I was you know, talking to one of our players. And um, the, the player came to me. He was you know, a little down, a little disappointed about his position and you know, uh, his playing time and things like that. And I kind of asked him, I said, like, uh, well, have you done anything you know, to help you prove your game and, and get better? And usually when you ask a kid that, you know, if you made any sacrifices to get better, do anything to improve your game, and usually when you ask them that, you just shut them down. They just move on to a different thing, because they usually have it. And he's like, well, coach, you know, this off season, you know what I did? He said, like, I got a job working at the UPS. I got up every morning and, and worked a six-hour shift. And then I used that money to go out and get a, get a skill instructor coach. And he said, so I got up every morning and worked that UPS shift, and then I used that money to to pay that skill instructor. And he said, the biggest reason is I wanted to be a play. He wanted to be, every guy that plays basketball wants to be a position lower than what they are. So if they're center, they want to be a power forward. If they're power forward, they want to be a, a swing forward. If they're a two guard, they want to be a point guard. So everybody wants to be a position lower than that. And so he's a, a so-called power forward, a four man. So he had spent all this money and worked real hard in the off season, and he still played that spot. And I felt bad for the kid because that was a great answer. He had made some sacrifices and, and did some hard work. And I said, I feel bad for you. I said, this, this is what I'm going to do. I said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk to that skill instructor and see if we can't get you some sort of refund. Because <laughs> you are a power forward and that's the position you want to play. <laughs> but uh, I. I I joke around a lot, and, and um, in, in all seriousness, I, I do want you guys to understand this. My job is to put a quality product out on the court, okay? And, and we're going to make sure we do that. And uh, Scott asked me to say something about my five rules that I have for my team. And it is something I tell our guys when we're recruiting them, and I want to make sure they're comfortable with those five rules, because if they're not comfortable with abiding by these five rules, there's really no need to come to my program. Um, the first thing is tell the truth, okay? And if you if you look at what's going on right now in society, most people are not getting in trouble because of what they did. It's the, it's the cover up is worse than the crime, you know. So that's the most important thing is if something goes wrong and I ask you, I need you to tell me the truth. I need you to be forthright. It's not just you know the kid being forthright and honest with me; it's being reciprocated by me. So I want to make sure I'm telling them the truth as far as recruiting because I feel. If I lie to a kid, if I don't tell him the truth about what's going to happen in Mississippi State, and he gets there, then all of a sudden, like, he doesn't have trust in me. And now all of a sudden, now, he doesn't give me 100% because he doesn't trust me. So the number one rule in our program is make sure you tell the truth. But the second thing is real easy is no drugs, you know, and that's something that happens in programs and things like that. It's just no place for it, you know, in college basketball, college athletics, period. Uh, the third thing is, live up to your responsibilities as a student okay and, and i don't put student athlete i think our guys have unbelievable advantages as far as like having the tutors and the academic coordinators at their hand in order to be successful in the classroom you know they're here to get a degree a mississippi state state degree means a lot okay so you know that's the third rule make sure that you live up to your academic responsibilities as a student the fourth thing is simple and kind of all-encompassing don't do anything to embarrass yourself, your team, the program, the university, or your family, okay? And, and that right there is like not putting something stupid up on Twitter or Facebook or getting a public intoxication or something like that. I just feel like you gotta make sure that you handle yourself in, in a dignified manner and be a good person. And then the last thing is just be on time. You know, I feel like I told those guys, it's the biggest sign of disrespect when you show at a meeting or in class or something like that on the late. You need to be on time. So those are the five rules that we have in our program. And I think if the guys can abide by those five rules and they'll be successful not just on the basketball court, but in life. And that's that's really important to me. I want to make sure that we're grooming young men, not just basketball players. Um, but uh, I don't want to go much too too much longer here. I want to get a chance to talk to you about the program. And, and I really mean this from the bottom of my heart. Like 
you guys have been unbelievable as a fan base so far to me and my family. Every place that I go, there's always a handshake and talking about how happy they are to have me here at Mississippi State. And we're going to do everything in our power to make sure we put out a quality product there for you, okay? Now, I want to get a chance here, just, just a quick story here. We, we was over at, uh, over at Bank Corp South, went over there and did some things. And like when we got done, the bank was actually closed. And so I felt a little weird. I said, like, I'm in a bank right now with clothes, so I, like, I should have on some all black and kind of tiptoeing around. Um, <laughs> but uh, the guys over at Bank Corp have been unbelievably good to us, and uh, we want to make sure we uh, tell those guys how much we appreciate uh, them being so hospitable to us, all right? Right now, Jamie is going to come up and get a chance to talk to you about Bank Corp South. <laughs> 